We will now present the Early Career Investigator Award for AAHPM, which recognizes a researcher who is developing as a leader and showing promise in making contributions to a scientific foundation for practice and research. This year's awardee is, doc awardee is Dr. Arif Kamal. Doc, doc, Dr. Kamal is a Physician Quality and Outcomes Officer at Duke Cancer Institute and, and also serves as Assistant Professor in Medicine in the Division of Medical Oncology and an Outpatient Attending Physician in Duke's Palliative Care Program. He has published more than 80, not 18, 80 original research articles, clinical reviews, and editorial, and founded the Global Palliative Care Quality Alliance, a leading palliative care quality improvement and learning collaborative. Dr. Kamal has served as the academy, uh, served the academy as co-chair of the eSpecs Quality Measures Working Group, chair of the Research SIG, and a member of both the research and quality committees. Please join me in congratulating Dr. Arif Kamal. <laughs> uh, if you can't laugh at yourself, who will? Well, actually, all of you will, apparently. Okay, so it's good. It's good. So, friends and colleagues, I am deeply humbled and honored to be standing here. But more importantly, I want to remind you of the great work that several early career investigators are doing within our field. There is a powerful force and movement moving forward. I look forward to my friends and colleagues who are doing great work across the field, celebrating your achievements as well. Many of you will be standing on this stage very soon, and I will be one of them who will be clapping the loudest. I think a lot about my path to palliative care, and as I stand in this room, there's 3,500 others of you who've made a commitment to changing, oftentimes, the careers you were in or the path that you were going in the first place to be here and to be part of this revolution. My path to palliative care has been shaped by so many who have very kindly and generously offered their time and their commitment, who are very busy in their own way, but who will answer emails and texts and phone calls. As an early career investigator, you're trying to find your way, and it's so great to know so many are out there to help you. Betty Farrell, Randy Curtis, Christine Ritchie, Steve Panelat, Gene Kuttner, Karen Steinhauser, David Cassaret, Amy Abernathy, Janet Bull, and several others have been so committed to my career, I am in deeply indebted to all of you. The Cambia Health Foundation as well has invested in me as a leader, and so many of you as well. They have put their time, commitment, and energy to committing to giving us as early investigators the time and space to grow as people and professionals. I am deeply indebted to them and hope that in some way I can make a return on their very important investment. I think about my path being shaped by other leaders as well. Diane Meyer has touched all of us in some way. I remember very early on as a fellow hearing her speak and say, know who is your audience. As an individual and as an investigator, knowing who your audience is, who you plan to impact and change and motivate, keeps you centered, makes it easy as a young person to say no when there are so many opportunities available. Some may accuse me of not knowing how to do that yet, but I'm working on it. <laughs> but it's important. Great advice from Diane. Mark Gann, CEO of Cambia Health Solutions, talks about unrelenting and steady pressure applied gently over time, can move mountains. Mark is right. What he's talking about is a collection of small droplets of water that form streams and then rivers, and then ultimately canyons within large rocks and mountains forming beautiful scenes, not that far from here, in fact. In many ways, all of you are small drops of water as well. When we coalesce together, we become this powerful force moving through rock, pushing through those complexities of healthcare that we are trying to solve. We are on our way, and we are doing so well. This is an important revolution. Thank you all for being part of it.
Lastly, my path to palliative care involves my family. My wife, Jenny, of 10 years, is my rock. She's the one who keeps me grounded. My precocious four-year-old, Miriam, reminds me all the time that when you come home, and even if you've had a bad day, that reading three books to her and going to sleep and having her call me daddy is the most important role I play. I came to palliative care actually with the original thought of being a breast cancer clinical trialist. My mom, my inspiration, a Muslim immigrant to this country. Came in 1974 from Bangladesh, leaving behind her family, her friends, everything she knew, the bravest person I know, came halfway across the world to give us a better life. She was diagnosed with breast cancer when I was a sophomore in high school. My plan at that point was to be a breast cancer clinical trialist, to cure breast cancer, because that's what I saw was my mission in life. But as so happens, and as often to all of us, her breast cancer returned when I was a medical student. Incurable and metastatic at the time, I changed my mind. My focus was now on caring and not so much just on curing. In that spirit, two years went by and several important things occurred. I paid very close attention to the care that she received. At the time, I was not so nuanced in what was going right or not, but in my heart, certain things felt well and certain things felt like they could have been improved. The oncology team did a fantastic job in many ways, but I saw gaps in the primary palliative care that was being delivered. The handoff and the transition between the oncology team and the hospice team, a very important event for any family. I saw improvements in that process as well. And if we're being honest, and I'm saying this is the collective we, I saw plenty of opportunities in her hospice care as well that now being in a position where I can help maybe study and improve, I remain impassioned to do exactly that. My wife and I got engaged very quickly as soon as my mom entered hospice in February of 2007, almost 10 years to the date. We hurried really quickly over the next couple months and put together a wedding in my parents' home in the small town of Missouri where I grew up. 200 people from across the country packed in. The smell was of Chinese takeout catering, which was the best we could do at the last minute. 200 people standing up against the walls, watching two families come together, but most importantly, getting a chance to say goodbye. 200 people saw my mom, their rock and inspiration and mine, and got a chance to be there at an important time. And that made me even more impassioned to be who I am and to be driven in the way that I am. Here's my imperative to us, though, as a field. We cannot merely take credit and pat ourselves on the back for showing up. That may have been the argument 10 or 20 years ago, but we are better than that. This is the prime time. This is the big league. The lights are on us. It is our responsibility to respond in a way that is high quality and proven. We cannot measure our excellence, certainly not amongst ourselves and not by outsiders, by the number of patients we see. Sometimes referred to as the average daily census, the RVUs or the number of consults we do in a year. We must measure our excellence in the number of lives we change. I will continue on working with so many of you very passionate to improve the quality of hospice and palliative care because that's what our patients, persons, community members, and caregivers with serious illness deserve. And I appreciate the opportunity to share with you my story and a chance, at least in one small way, to honor my mother's legacy. Thank you very much.